How y'all doing? Well, I'm doing my taxes, so not so great. Thank you for asking. These are the invoices I have to process. They are an example of actual invoices I have to process. This is just five files. I actually have to work through about 80 of them. If we open them all up, we can see that they are all almost identical. So what changes are the prices and the invoice ID and the date. But thankfully the layout remains the same. Now of course I could go through each file and just copy the invoice ID and the uh, come on, the date and then the no yes this and then that no, no yes there and then this and then so on and so on invoice ID and date and um, price no tax tax and price with tax so it can be done manually of course but we will try to automate this process and make the computer do this pull all these fields from the PDF files I just used Excel but we can easily just use LibreOffice Calc as well and we can also just use Google Docs Sheets. That's really not the important part even though most people will want to have Excel files in the end. Now the tool we will be using is Textricator which has a cute little mascot and no videos with explanations on how to use it yet. So this is where I come in. The project is at GitHub which is a good sign because open source projects give me a good feeling in, in the stomach area usually. And there are some instructions on how to get going, but I'm going to try to make it easier hopefully in this video. First things first, we're going to download Textricator. In the future, you will probably go to the GitHub page and then click on release. And then you will find something here, but currently no such thing. You will have to scroll down for now, go to quick start and then download. You can also just hit Control F and type download and the Textricator is available over here. You will have to pay attention uh, on the sorting because um, it doesn't know 10 is more than 9 because it starts with a 1. So pick the largest number and then go in that folder and as you can see here it tells you to get four windows which is the platform we're going to use. It requires the bin.zip file so you can search for bin.zip and these are all confirmation files including this one so we're gonna just download this one here it goes we're gonna go to show in folder firefox and edge i think have this in the upper right area this download indicator so here i have the zip file i'm just gonna right click it and hit extract all and extract and in there is another textricator folder and here's the textricator.bat file, which is the file we're going to be using this whole time. Now, if you double click it, Windows might be worried for you. Press more info and press run anyway. Nothing will happen. It's not a user interface program. To actually run it, you will have to hold the shift key down on your keyboard, right click and press open PowerShell window here or open command line or something like that, if you have that. And in here you will have to run Textricator. So if you type in Tex and then press the Tab key, it will autocomplete to Textricator.bat. Press Enter and it might show you this. This would mean that you already have Java installed on your system. Good. All right, let's assume you do not have Java installed. Then you will get Java is not recognized as an internal or external command operable program or batch file. Now if we look at quick start it says Java version 8 or higher but it turns out that if you install Java 8 you get an error like this. The GNI error has occurred. Please check your installation. Unsupported class version error. File so and so has been compiled by a more recent version of the Java runtime class file version 55.0. This version of the Java runtime only recognizes class file versions up to 52.0. And I found this page which explains that 55 means Java 11 and 52 means Java 8. So I did actually run Java 8 but I need at least Java 11 apparently. So to be extra safe we're gonna get the latest Java I'm just going to get the latest because why not? If you don't have 64 bits, you will have to go back to 8. You can also use portable apps for that. But you might have to downgrade Textricator, get one of the older versions or compile their dependencies, I suppose. Anyways, I'm going to get the latest, download it, 
direct link because progress bars are a lie. As per usual, let's hit show in folder. Here it is. I'm just going to double click it. And yes, run anyways. Next, understand. And we're going to change the path. We're going to take this path, put it in here, add a slash, or is it backslash, and just write Java for convenience. You know what? Java 15. All right, so now we have our portable Java over here. We're going to go inside into app, into bin, copy this path, and go back to Textricator, Textricator, right click Textricator.bat, and edit it. And Java over here will need to have what we just copied in front of it and another backslash. And uh, we could also add an exe.exe at the end, why not? And many of you might have a space in their username, so let's also add double quotes around this whole construction, assuming that's the folder where you put it. If uh, you have problems, just put it on, like make a new folder in C or D or whatever. But uh, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have problems. So I'm going to save this file, file save, close, and now it works. And we can get the help file. One more step in preparation. We're going to combine all these invoices into one. I'm going to use PDF Sam Basic for that, which is open source. Here we are on PDF Sam's website. And the thing is, they have uh, bloatware with their installer over here. You can see, I mean, that's my initial instinctive reaction because why why so we're gonna just go for the windows portable archive over here and let it download as per usual show in folder right click the zip file extract all and we're just gonna go to um, the folder and double click pdfsam.exe and we need to merge files specifically these files so I'm just going to drag them in and over here at the bottom, we're going to hit run. Fake invoices is my file name of choice. I'm going to cut this file and put it into Textricator, Textricator over here, just next to Textricator.bat for easier working with that. And now the fun can begin. We're just going to confirm that everything here is inside correctly. I'm using the mouse wheel to check that date changes, invoice ID changes, prices change and jump around a little bit, but everything else remains the same. So back in PowerShell, I'm just going to type in text, press tab to autocomplete, press space, and then write text and space and uh, fake tab to autocomplete fake invoices, and then fake invoices.csv, comma separated values, enter. And this creates this file, which we can now open with LibreOffice. And it contains all the text fields or cells inside the PDF file on all the pages. And you can, of course, use Microsoft Office. And of course, you can also use Google Sheets. I will just freeze the top one, uh, the, the header row. And uh, what we have here are coordinates of all the text boxes, let's say. For example, the word invoice, as seen here, has its own little box with their coordinates from the left and from the top of a top left corner, upper left corner. That's why it says UL, upper left X coordinate, upper left Y coordinate, and its lower right corner, which is LRX and LRY. I guess also from the left and from the top. And then we have a width. Yeah, I guess so, because the height is zero for some un unexplained reason. So we have a width and the height zero, which is always zero. I don't know if it's true for all documents, but it certainly is for this one. Then we have the text content. Then we have a font font size, font color, and missing background color and missing URL link and page number. And knowing all these fields will allow us to build, let's call them traps, to extract data from the PDF file. What we need now is a YML file that explains to Textricator how to extract data. They can be quite long, but quite simple. 
for example, this is their uh, not so easy but quite useful tutorial YML file. Their GitHub project contains, I think, three of them in the test folder, in examples, probes, rap sheet, and school employee list, which we just had open. And probes is quite simple, and rap sheet is quite long. We are going to use this uh, employee list YML file as a base to construct our own YML file. It's the configuration file or config file for Textricator. And we will start by right clicking here, creating a new file. Let's just do a text document. Make sure that over here in view, after opening up this ribbon, that file name extensions is shown. Because then we're going to have to rename this to, for example, fake.yml. And yes, I am going to use Notepad++, which I highly recommend. You can use any text editor, including Notepad, but that's on you. Okay, so I have the school employee list here in GitHub on my right. And actually, I'm going to just copy paste it. I'm going to enable in language YML. Yalm. Yalm. YAML. YAML. And we're going to just start with an empty file. What happens if we do textricator.bat space form minus minus config fake dot yml space fake invoices dot pdf space fake extract dot csv we get an error of course because there is nothing to do yet so first things first we're going to add the extractor pdf dot pdf box and we are going to add the header and footer values maybe without the comments and i'm just going to measure how many points from the top and from the bottom we don't need we can do this over here in the csv file so let's see, what kind of data do we want? We want the invoice ID, we want the date, these three different prices, maybe this, maybe the description, the term, the name, and that is it. And since this file is sorted by the ULY value from top to bottom, so it always becomes bigger until it reaches the next page, we can safely say that any value lower than 200 and... Uh, well, let's say 90 is not interesting to us. So we're going to say that one, uh, 290 is the header. As for the footer, I just don't know how to measure it from the bottom. I suppose we can just measure like this, um, which is 4.38 inches. 4.38 times 72 would be 315. Let's uh, go with that, because why not? Next, there's max row distance, which allows for irregular rows. For example, it could be that date is a little bit higher than this date number. But if we use this, it will be given some kind of leeway. Not sure why it says 0 0.4 points here, but the value is 2. Now we're going to have to start improvising. I suppose root record type might be required. So let's copy that. And we're going to pick the value that let's say uniquely identifies these uh, sets the rows we're going to find which in this case will be the invoice id so we're just going to call this invoice id and then we're going to start copying record types and because in the example file it always uses employee 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 we're going to just copy invoice id to be honest i don't quite understand what the purpose of this is but we're just going to copy the sample file label and in quotes invoice id labels are used when nested record types come into play which does exist in the example document of their project but not in mine i think so we'll see and then value types are basically the columns that our exported csv file will have so value types will be invoice id then we're gonna have a date and then we're going to have, uh, yeah, the description. And then we're going to have price without tax, tax, price with tax. Some no tax, tax, and some with tax. Yes, my variable names are the best. And we're going to skip the children and child part because 
we're not going to have child elements. Um, you can look at their example files if you're curious what this means, but it's just more complex than what we have. This would come into play if there was more than one product per invoice. All right, now we can define the value types. And let's see, we're going to start with invoice ID, label, and then we're just going to give the name we want the CSV file to have as headers. Invoice ID, date, description, some no tax, tax, some with tax, colon after each of these, and uh, label after each of these, date, description, some no tax, tax, and some with tax. All right, I saved the file. Let's see what happens if we run this now. Yeah, cannot construct instance of linked hash map, although at least one creator exists. No string argument constructor factory method to deserialize from string value. Invoice ID, invoice ID. Yeah, I also don't understand what this means. So we're just going to keep going. Value types we're done with. Record types we're done with. Header, footer we're done with. Now we're going to have states. This program works with finite state machines. But the sad fact is that there is no simple English Wikipedia entry for finite state machine. Look at this, a state diagram for a turnstile. You can push it, and if it's locked, it's still locked. You can put a coin in there, and if it's locked, it will become unlocked. And if you put a coin in it, will it use the coin? Will it become unlocked? And you... It will not become, it's still unlocked, it will remain unlocked. But what happens to the coin, I wonder? So yeah, I start thinking about all the wrong things when seeing such diagrams, which is why knowing that this is a finite state machine is not finitely useful to me. There are states, the program will be in states. Also, my understanding is that the program will first ignore all these because of their uly value matching our header number. And then it will start with this entry, invoice ID, and it will check, is does this match whatever we define as the specifications for this to be inserted into the exported CSV file? And if not, it will continue with the next row. And then it will continue with the next row and with the next row, etc. So we will just copy blindly initial state in it. By the way, I didn't tell you, but it is incredibly important that you keep the indentation exactly the same. So if there are two spaces here, so for example, for header, the default thing has to have two spaces on the left, as it does, but the footer as well, and invoice ID here as well, etc., etc. So back to initial state in it. Uh, now we're going to have to define the states that exist in this finite state machine, and we're going to add the init state and we're going to add transitions to this init state. And now it's going to have a condition. Also, this dash is important, so let's copy that. And then let's copy this part. Two spaces, two spaces. And we're going to need a next state. We're going to call the next state invoice ID. Because apparently the example just uses employee all the time. So we're just going to copy that methodology of using the name of the field that we want. So condition will be invoice ID and next state will be invoice ID. This means that we will need to create a new state. Init is a state. And now if we create a new line or two and from the, oops, and from the left do two spaces and write invoice ID colon, then we create a new state. There is now state in it and now there's also a state invoice ID, new line, space, space, transitions, colon. And because every state needs to have a way to get to some other state, we're going to add to the transition condition any, so that after it finds our invoice ID, it immediately goes back to init in any case. So no, no matter what the next matches, I, I guess that makes sense. Next state will be init. Also, this will start record because we want to actually, when invoice ID does match, we want uh, the content to be written down in a new row. As soon as we are in this row, as soon as the program has checked all these, 
well, skipped these and then checked this, then it has, when it matches this, it has to write down this value into our CSV file. Now let's see what happens if we run this. Just so we get used to some error messages. Uh, cannot construct instance of, okay, this is the same error as before. You know what? I think it might have to do with the dash 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 at the beginning. So let's add a new line, put dash 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 in there, and run this. No. No. Oh, whoops. I accidentally added record types invoice ID over here. What a mistake. Okay, we are at invoice ID, which is the equivalent of employee state here. We're gonna fold up states for now because we want to look at the conditions. So let's copy conditions. And uh, let's copy employee condition over here. And also go down and copy the any condition over here. And as usual, we're going to rename uh, employee to invoice ID. Invoice ID matches. It matches a string that starts with ID dash. All right. So now we get different kinds of errors. Exception and Fred main Java Lang exception page one at invoice no valid transition from init. So we have no way to get anywhere from init in the state machine, I guess that's what it means. Let's take a look at the init state. It's over here. It starts here and it ends here. Um, so the thing is, I assume that the program skips over these lines and then it starts with invoice ID and it checks if a condition invoice ID applies to this. And if it does apply to it, it goes to the next state invoice ID. However, if it does not apply, it cannot continue. It goes nowhere, which means we need another condition and next state. So we're just going to copy this block, paste it in here. And in case that the condition invoice ID is not true, then the next one will be checked. The next condition, as far as I understand, and the condition will be any. So basically, we want to catch any case that is not covered by invoice ID, which is defined here. And in case it is not correct, it does not match, we want init to return to init. I suppose uh, this is like here, inserting a coin inside an unlocked turnstile or pushing a locked turnstile, nothing changes. However, also when you do that, it will continue from this line to the next line or field or whatever. So I saved this, control S is a friend of mine. Let's see if it works. No, because uh, there is no type containing value type in it. I, I'm not 100% sure, but we need to put include false in here, because otherwise it tries to write something, I suppose. Include false before transitions. Save the file. Running it again. Oh my goodness, it worked. Okay, so now we have a file fake extract.csv. Let's just open it in over here. And it extracted nothing. We do have the headers. We have page. Uh, invoice ID, date, description, sum of tax, tax, sum of tax, but there are no values. And we're going to fix that first. As you can see, we have this invoice ID match or condition and strangely text refers to content when this matches this whatever it is as it is defined by... Oh yeah, this is regex. I didn't exactly realize that this is regex matching. Some flavor of regex anyways, I suppose. Um, conditions are expressions parsed by expr, which is a Java exp Oh, it requires Java 11, so interesting, interesting. Uh, but here are some examples of what we can do. Interesting. For my case, if we look at invoice ID, so if we uh, flip through all pages, we can see they all start with x, x, y, and then one, and then one, two, five digits. So what we have currently here is the letter uppercase I, uppercase D, dash, and then this is supposed to be a decimal number, so 0 to 9, and the star means that there is a variable number of these digits. So because we know that my invoices have XXY as the invoice ID in the beginning, weirdly, XXY, and then we can do this, or we can do one, two, three, four, five, because I know that there are five of them. Ugly, I know. I save the file, let's run it again. Let's open fake extract. And there we have it. Oh, ah, oh my goodness, it worked. So we extracted the invoice ID of each of the pages. So we have 29 here, and then we have 129, correct. Then we have 200, then we have 
0, 22, and then we have 0, 23. What? Uh, you know what? The order is just wrong, but I guess that's uh, the fault of me putting them inside of PDF Sam Basic in the wrong order. Whatever, it doesn't matter to me. All right, so we're going to continue and try to get date. Time for a date uh, state. Date. This will not start a record, but it should be included, yes. By default, they all get included. So we can just copy transitions. Now, if this doesn't work, yeah, we want to go back to init. But now, after invoice ID, we actually want to go to a date. Let's see if this is enough. Yeah, okay. It actually copied date. Uh, I forgot that I should add a condition. Duh. Hmm, interesting. Because of the thing we did earlier with uh, max row distance, apparently it chose date before the date value because uh, they do have a mismatch in the y position by 0 0.005. So actually this line 16 is supposed to be above line 15. So from here it jumped to date, which is fine. We're just going to work with it a different way. So what we're going to do actually is create the date search state. Not sure at all, not sure if this is the right way to go about it. Uh, date search. And we're going to have two conditions. Um, we're going to have uh, the date condition, which goes to the date state. And then in all other cases, it's just going to repeat itself. And the date search uh, state itself is not supposed to write anything to the CSV file. So it's going to be include false. And then we're going to create the date no search state, which uh, on the other hand will include, so we don't include, so we don't write include false, and it will only continue onwards to, well, let's say init under any condition. Now we have to write the date condition over here. Let's take a look at the date, yeah, at the conditions here. Date condition uh, in single quotes, and let's see how can we identify date as a unique thing that separates it from other things. We have its coordinate. We also have its format. So we know it's, in this case, it's digit, digit, dot, digit, digit, dot, digit, 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 and we know its position. So yeah, we're gonna do both a text match. So a text is gonna be approximately DD. I mean, yeah, backslash, backslash, D, backslash, backslash, D, apparently means digit. And then it's gonna be an escape full stop another two digits, another escaped full stop, and then one, two, three, four, four of these. And you know what? This might be just enough. But because there could be other dates in the document that you're working on, we're going to also add another one. We're going to write AND, as can be seen here, for example, and we're going to add a ULX restrictor. So we're going to restrict its position. So I just copied this part, 70 ULX 140. And if we look over here, we are checking we actually don't want the X position, we want the Y position because that one is much more unique in my opinion. Only the string date is on the same Y position, but it will not match the digit, digit, dot, digit, digit, dot, digit, 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 tongue breaker. 310 and 320, That's that will be my limiting factors. So it has to be 310, ULY, not X, and 320, that will be the range of the Y position from the top that it has to have. I saved this. Let's run it. And error. Did not reach end of file. 10 minutes and 40 seconds of debugging later. Hey, look at me. I freaking forgot these uh, slashes. Great. Hey, it works. Okay, let's open fake extract. I'm losing my mind. Huh. Well, it just inserted all the dates from all of the pages into this, even though it's still page one. So instead of date search, let's not loop back there. Instead, let's go to init and run it again. And if we open the file, it will open the already opened one. So close that and open it again. Hallelujah, it worked. Okay, now we just need to continue the same for um, description, some no tags, tags, some with tags. Let's do description, description search, description, some no tags, search, some no tags, tags, search, tags, some with tags, search, and 
sum of tags and then each search will not be included and this one will go to description and it will loop back to itself if it doesn't find it. Description will in all cases keep going to some no tax search. Same for tax and some no tax and some with tax. Wow, this is a mess. Okay, so we were at date. Now from date we will go to description search. And in description search we will either go to description if the description condition matches or we'll go to description search again. From description we will go to some no text search. From some no text search we will go to some no text search if there is no match to some no text. But if there is a match to some no text we will go to some no text. And from some no text we will under every condition go to text search. And from tax search, we will go to tax search if there is no match to tax, but if there is a match to tax, we will go to tax. And from tax, we will always go to sum with tax search, from which we will return to itself if there is no match with sum with tax, uh, uh, to which we will go if there is a match. And then from sum with tax, we will only go to init. And now we need conditions for these four. Okay, so now we need to figure out what kind of conditions uh, we need to match for description, for example. If we look at the invoices, description can be, for example, Swifty Trip. Actually, it includes the number as well. Here, for example, it's here after Swifty Trip. We're just going to use the positional values. We're going to match both ULY and ULX. So description will have a 430 value or higher ULY, but lower than 400 and let's say 50. And the ULX position will be 75 to let's say 90. And 75 ULX uh, less than 90. Okay, we're gonna just put one equals one so we can have them without having to test them now. What happens if we run this? Nope, that, doesn't, that didn't work. I don't know why. Well, great. I added so many things we don't even know what the error might be caused by. Well, it seems that we are... Uh, this is caused by description. Some no text search. Yeah, everything is alright, isn't it? Description search. Description. Line 85, column 7. Oh, I see. The problem here is too much indentation. Jeez. Actually, no. I forgot transitions. And I forgot transitions here, and I forgot transitions here, and I forgot transitions here. What a freaking mess. Hey, it worked. Fake extract. Open it up. And it didn't work. 15 minutes and 48 seconds of debugging later. It would appear that the footer measurement maybe is not from the bottom, but from the top. Huh. Yeah, pretty sure this is from the top, maybe. I don't know. Let's just exclude fo footer, because I think that might have been the problem. If we look at the file now... What? No. One trip. So in description we still do this. Let's try adding a description condition leading to description. Let's fix the search of a position again. 50, let's say 50. Okay, this kind of worked. So we have now this good 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 all right for the rest for these three we're just gonna use positional uh, values so just like this and then it's gonna be 380 to 400 for all three of them and then it's going to be 460 to 4, 470, 480. And 
and 525 from 510 this is for this value and then from 471 so this is going to match this this is going to match this and so on Hey, it worked. It freaking worked. This is kind of painful, but it kind of worked. I do not understand why we get the 6, 0, 0, but we do not get the euro sign and the space behind it. I do not understand that at all. Stuff seems to be lying to us here. Oh great, also Excel decides to just remove the commas. You would have to change the delimiter before importing. Yay. So much for my Textricator beginner tutorial. I suppose I will provide the example files and the script I wrote during this. Check the description for all the details. Links are there as well. Textricator is cool, but oh my god, this is a pain. I will see you next time if I ever make a video for this again. Well, until we cross paths again, ciao.